Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a cubic equation with complex numbers. So we have z cubed equals 2z or not 2z minus 3i. So we're going to be solving for z values and this is an interesting cubic equation because one of the coefficients is imaginary. So Let's use our imagination to solve this problem and I'll be presenting two methods. Let's start with the first one. So first method basically uses the cubic formula, whatever you want to call it, whichever guy you want to attribute it to. But I'm going to go ahead and isolate the constant, in which case this is negative 3i. So I'm going to consider the following identity. This is something that we always use with the cubic formula. If you remember, then you don't really have to mem uh, memorize the formula. Uh, the formula for a plus b quantity cubed and now from that if you subtract the middle terms remember the binomial theorem you end up with the first and last terms which are the two cubes right so this identity always works and it's pretty much what i use for um, you know cubes now we're gonna make it look like our equation uh, so we're gonna do some substitutions here let's say set a plus b equal to z and then set this equal to negative 3i and set this equal to negative 2. So exactly same equation that we have, right? So this, this means, in other words, if a plus b is set to z, then I have to solve a system that's made up of these two equations, which is a b equals 2 thirds by dividing both sides by negative 3 and a cubed plus b cubed equals negative 3i. Obviously, at this point, guessing and checking would be hard because the sum of the cubes is imaginary while the product is real. So how do we get rid of uh, this one of these variables? You can definitely isolate one of these variables and plug into the second one. But the method that I favor is cubing both sides. And then from this equation, isolating b cubed. And then substituting this into this equation. Make sense? That's pretty simple, right? Looks like a lot of work, but it's actually a little easier because that immediately turns it into a quadratic after one substitution. So we use a lot of substitution because substitution is awesome. Don't you think so? And then we get the following. At this point, let's go ahead and set a cubed equal to c. And then a cubed times a cubed is going to be a to the 6, which is c squared, right? So it's going to look like this. Negative 3i c minus c squared equals 8 over 27. Let's put everything on the right hand side so that we get a positive leading coefficient and a full quadratic with imaginary coefficients, right? Now this quadratic is easy to solve because there's something called the quadratic formula, much better than the cubic formula. It's negative b plus minus the square root of b squared, which is negative 9. Notice that i squared is negative 1. Plus minus, I mean the minus 4a, uh, what is it? b squared minus 4ac, yeah, forgot the quadratic formula. And that would give you 32 over 27. And if you do the math, I think you're going to get negative 243 minus 32, which is negative 275, divide by 27, and that's going to be imaginary as well. So you're going to get something like this. 275 over 27 with an i and of course you can take out the i factor it so on and so forth notice that c is a cubed so to find a you have to cube root it but there are two roots one of the cube roots will be a the other one will be b by adding those cube roots you're going to be able to get the z value but guess what <laughs> good luck with that that's going to be super, super complicated or should i say complex anyways that brings us to the end of the first method because the first method sucks. So second method is obviously much better. That's why it's called the second method. So here's how the second method works. Z cubed equals 2Z minus 3I. Awesome. Now, let's go ahead and consider the following. We might find some solutions or could we use something called rational root theorem. Let's put everything on the same side to make a full cubic, right? So z squared is missing, so that's kind of good. And I can kind of guess and check some solutions, especially based upon the constant term, uh, looking at the uh, divisors of 3i, you know, i is imaginary, but you can still talk about, uh, you know, i divides it, 3i divides it, negative 3i divides it, negative i divides it, plus minus 1, so on and so forth, right? There's a few factors. 
So you can kind of go ahead and test them out. And I did, and I found something. Let's see if you can find the same one. But here's what I did. I can go ahead and split up the three i because I noticed that the coefficient of i is three and I have a two here. Ignore the negative two for now. So I can kind of split it up this way. z cubed plus i minus two z plus two i. So I gave two i to negative two z so that I can pair them up and hopefully, and again, this is wishful thinking. I know at the beginning it's kind of like, okay, you're hoping that something good is gonna come out of this. And it actually does, sometimes it doesn't. But I I'm going to do a little bit of hocus pocus or math magic here if you allow me to do it. Uh, I cubed is negative I, so I is negative I cubed. Isn't that cool? So I'm gonna replace I with negative I cubed. And guess what this is gonna give me? Difference of two cubes. Yes, isn't that mathematical? So now I can go ahead and factor this as z minus i, multiply by z squared plus z i plus i squared. Remember the sum of, I mean, not sum, well, same thing, but difference of two cubes, and then minus two times z minus i. So this shows indirectly that z equals i is a solution because factor theorem tells us that if z equals i is a solution, then z minus i is a factor. Looks like z minus i is a factor, which is cool. And then I can go ahead and factor that out. But look, i squared is negative one, right? So I can go ahead and replace it with negative one. And then z squared plus z i, or should I say i z, because i is kind of like the coefficient here. Minus one, minus two, that's gonna give me a minus three. Yay. Now this is completely factored, well, sort of, at least, except for the quadratic. But uh, quadratic, we can actually solve it without factoring because factoring would be a little painful. But if you want to go for it, that's fine. From here, we get z equals i. And from the quadratic, we get negative b plus minus the square root of b squared, which is in this case going to be negative 1 because i squared, minus plus 4ac. 4 times 3 is 12. So we're going to add a 12 here. Yay, that's going to be real awesome. And then from here, we basically get plus minus the square root of 11 minus i divided by 2. So we got three solutions, which is normal because we are dealing with a cubic equation, right? All right, are these the only solutions? Yes, because it's a cubic equation. As you can see, with the first method, we are only going to get one solution from here because the sum of the cube roots are going to give us a single expression, but you have to find the cube root of some complex numbers which is again painful, but it should give you one of these solutions. Go ahead and uh, continue and see what you get from there because that'll be a good exercise. And that exercise is left for you, okay? So let's go ahead and see if we get any results from Wolfram Alpha. Yay, we got the same answer, so we agree, that's cool. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.